Check out this beautiful bass the regular grandfather caught on our three inch swim shed. Welcome back, regular viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in again. We really appreciate it. This week, uh, we're going to talk about a, making a simple top water. But before we get started, uh, I just want to show you something I found fishing the other day. Um, yeah, I uh, saw this thing floating in the water with some line attached to it, and a uh, regular assistant and I picked it up. And sure enough, that's a legit shotgun shell um, with, a, with a little bobber stopper on the top there. You put your line through there, let the spring go. And, uh, you know, cast this out and hilarity ensues, I guess. But um, obviously this is not a live shotgun shell, but it is a real 12 gauge shotgun shell with a real roll crimp there. Uh, I don't know if it's filled with something, whatever, but I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, uh, this is like the most Texas piece of fishing equipment I think I've ever seen. So anyway, there that is. Moving on. Uh, this week we're going to talk about making a very simple top water. I have a length of a dowel here. Uh, I have another piece of a dowel. That's that's a repurposed trash. We're going to use uh, this Forstner bit and uh, this saw. Maybe a couple other things along the way, but pretty much that's it. And we're going to make ourselves a top water out of this guy right here. So uh, let's get started on that great adventure right now. I don't know what I was waiting for there, but whatever. Uh, anyway. Nice non-square cut. Perfect for somebody somewhere. Uh, we can square that up on the bench grinder and uh, make it look a little bit nicer. But um, what we're trying to do here is we're going to make a plug out of this. So we're going to bore this out uh, down into here, um, probably about yay far. And we're going to make a rattle chamber. And then we're going to take a bit of this here, glue it to that there, and stick that there and this here. And that'll plug that hole so that our rattles don't get out. So we want it tail weighted though. So we might uh, want to put some lead down in there and uh, get a little bit heavier and then have some BBs that it can uh, roll into. So uh, that's basically the process we're going to do for this top water right here. Like that off for me. Thank you. Okay. Dusty and rusty. It's okay, but trusty. Okay. So So next we are going to uh, drill our hole down in here, uh, make the cavity for where our rattle is going to go. So we're going to get the drill press set up right over here and get drilling. So I got this set up in my drill press and I've got it so that it's going to go to the depth that I want. Um, and that'll give me plenty of space for my rattle chamber. And again, uh, it's important that it's tail weighted. I'm just trying to center this up so that our drill Drills down the center of it. Exciting drill vice maneuvering action, right? Or whatever this thing is called. I forget now. Make sure that's in the middle looking. All right. So that actually went, you know, surprisingly well. So this other dowel that I have here from another project fits right in there. And again, I'm only going to want about, I guess, that much of it, just enough to make a plug here. And that plug is going to get glued onto the back of this baby right here. Um, and that's going to get glued onto the back of that. And then we'll shape it. But first, uh, making this plug, uh, I'm going to make the rear hook hanger. And that's all going to be one piece together. Could just easily put that in the vise, but, you know, where's the fun in that, I guess. All right, thank you. And look at, there's already a hole. How nice and convenient. Okay, is that gonna fit pretty squarely on there? Well, that's the side you cut there, guy. Sort of squarish. I guess that'll work. That'll be close enough. Okay. Hmm. Find the center. Not the center. And then it came through that hole already. Wow. Okay, we're going to use stainless steel lock wire. Uh, this is 0 0.041 inches. 
I use that because that's what I bought. Got an idea. Okay. My last video I had my little rotary tool set up with the uh, cutoff wheel, which didn't work, by the way. And I think what I'm going to do is just try to cut down just a little slit there. And then that way I can bend this over into that hole uh, and that'll lock it in place. Let's see. Let's give that a whirl. All right. I think that was dangerous enough. I mean, I think that worked. Perfect. Yeah, don't try to use a vice or vice grips or gloves or anything like that. Just go take this thing, spin it at a bajillion miles an hour, uh, you know, uh, right next to your fingers. What could possibly go wrong? Professionalism. Why start now? For our next trick, we will use one of our new favorite compound pounds, UV resin. Because it's just so darn quick. I'm trying to get the regular grandfather in on this stuff. He's not convinced yet, which is one of his favorite phrases, by the way. I'm not convinced. Actually, it's a bright, sunny day out, believe it or not. I'll be right over there in God's UV resin chamber, and I'll be right back. Thank you, God, for the use of your UV chamber. Look at that. Solid as a rock. Okay. Let's put a little more goo on there. Put that dog through there. Smoosh it a boot. That's Canadian. Now we're going to bend that over and lock it in like so, so that that can't pull out. Cut that off. Let's see if it's still cool beans. Okay, our plug is going to work. Let's fill it again with more UV resin. Don't let me forget to put the weights in before I glue this in. Don't let me do that, okay? I can feel it coming in the air tonight. And hope Phil Collins has a good sense of humor. Okay, our part is now fully cured and it fits. We do have a wide gap here, but such is life. Uh, but we can fill that in and no one will notice except for the people watching this. But I did while that was waiting. I thought about it a little bit. I had poured out some lead on a flat surface like you do when you're bored. No, just kidding, because I used this a, in another video um, to make little discs for uh, these little guys right here, lead discs for weights, and uh, I made another small one right here. I used a 7 16 gasket punch, and uh, remember to wear safety goggles, okay? Important tip right there uh, when you're using a gasket punch. Sure. Anyway, uh, so I used that punched out a little piece of lead that I'm going to glue on the back of this as well um, so that the lead weights that we're going to put in our lure have something uh, to hit against. But also, again, we want the weight of this lure to be towards the back end so that it sits in the water. Uh, well, if this was the plane of the water, you want it to sit like this so it'll do the walk the doggy thing a little bit better. All right, so let's get that glued on as well with our UV resin. Little dab will do you. Magic. Look at that. Okay, now we can put a little more on and bring it out in the sunlight. So while that's, again, cooking outside in the sunlight, uh, I'm going to, well, I was thinking, which is always dangerous, because um, that didn't made up that well because the UV resin caused a little lip. And rather than try to work that lip out of there, I have a step drill and I'm not afraid to use it. So I'm thinking I can just kind of do this. And create a chamfer there uh, that hopefully our, our bit will, uh, our piece or whatever, that plug will, will kind of sit into. So uh, we'll stop there for now and we'll see if it fits in. And uh, we can hollow it out just a little bit more if need be, just right on the end right there. But, uh, you know, step drills, the American dream. Okay, now that's solidly on there. The whole package still fits in. Much snugger fit, more snug fit, snug, snuggest fit, snugglier, snuggliest. Maybe that's it, snuggliest. Oop, hello, did that wrong. That's the snuggliest fit right there. Okay, what did I tell you? Don't let me forget the weight, don't let me, or the rattle. This is uh, pretty heavy right here, so I don't know 
how many of these I want to put in. Two? Should I go for two or just for one? What size are these even? Oh, they feel like about eight ounce or so. Number six, whatever that is. Okay. But there's 24 of them. That makes no sense. Ooh. That's a pretty good rattle. Let's hear what it sounds like with just the one. Stay there. Get the crumbs out. <laughs> All right, musical. How would you put it in there? Okay. Moving on. I think it sounds more rattlier with one. Okay, it still wants to tip, so that's good. Unlike me at a restaurant. Okay. And... Yeah, we're just going to go with one. We're going to glue this around. Again, UV resin. <sighs> if only I had a rag for that. Okay. Okay, back out to the sunlight. Let's glue that dog on there. And we'll be right back. All right, so this has dried completely. And uh, we need to establish where the bottom is going to be. Because I do want to do a little bit of shaping to it. Not much. Okay, we're going to call that the bottom. And uh, while I'm uh, shaping, my uh, young, uh, eldest regular assistant was trying to make a lure. Uh, I don't quite know what he was making here, but he gave up on this one and left this little bit of scrap around. So I'm going to shape this up and finish it up for him as well, because I think it can make it into a neat little popper for him. So we'll do that as like a little surprise. He doesn't know that's coming, but he's been helping editing, doing a great job. So I'm sure he will figure it out once he gets to this part. But, this, you know, whatever. It's a thought that counts, I think. Usually it's cash that counts, but sometimes it's the thought. All right, we are back from the sander, and um, and I have a shape there that uh, brought me back to my childhood of striper fishing with my father on the Merrimack River, and uh, that was a pencil popper, um, and this is the size I always wanted. It came in like, like I think about that big and that big, uh, but uh, I always wanted one that was just a little bit smaller. How long is this? Let's see. Let's get our reasonably sized measuring device. Put that baby on there. That's five inches. Cool. Now, I think the ones that we were buying before were probably six inches or so, but that's not too bad, too big of a bait, but I like it. And again, this is why you make your own lures because you can get the size and the color uh, and the weights, whatever, whatever the, uh, whatever they won't sell you. Uh, you can get it yourself, make it yourself rather is what I'm trying to get at there. Uh, saying it very poorly. So uh, let's find where we're going to put our all. There it is. Okay. So again, we're going to use that vein as our center mark right there. So we're going to put that front hook right there. And that's not quite centered, but I think we're going to make that hole work. And I just got to make sure that the chamber here is uh, not going to run into that. Excuse me one second. I'm just going to check how uh, deep I had my drill set and uh, see where that falls from this line to there. And boy, howdy, am I glad I did that because it looks like that may be right at the end of that chamber. So we're going to move it up to here just to be safer. And while we're in the drilling mood, we're going to go ahead and put our weight in this guy right here. And the regular assistance lure. That is walking like crazy. That's going to ruin the heck out of that thing. Darn it, it. But worry not, I have more. Okay, unfortunately, that is no longer centered. <laughs> ah! Oh well. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay, we're back. I have with me the uh, youngest regular assistant. Say hello. Hello. She has been working on this little beauty right here. Great. And uh, she carved this herself. She cut it out herself, rather. Carved it herself 
I helped her sand it just a little bit. Um, I helped her put these in, but she, she drilled these out. She drilled out the lead hole. I did pour the lead, so she didn't have to do that. Um, and we put the... Um, hook hangers. Yep, so we've got the, the marks for our hook hangers. Got all these. Sorry if the audio is not great right now. We're having some technical difficulties with our camera, but that is okay. Or with the microphone system. Okay. So anywho, let's uh, hold your horses, kiddo. I'm holding them. They won't hold me. All right. We've got our uh, super glue now. We get these sized appropriately. And screw them in. Okay, that one's in there. Okay, see how you screw those in? Uh-huh. Okay, so that's our front hook hanger, rear hook hanger, and that's the eye right there. What okay. happened to this one? Yeah, 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 I'm okay, dancing. Cut it off. Okay, so now we're gonna do yours, okay? Hooray. So we're gonna cut it off here. Alright, come here. Take I'm these watching. pliers. And then you're going to take it and... Twist. Yeah, twist it in, okay? Like this? Let me try. Let me try it. Let me try. Okay. You're going to try it. You're going to try it. You're going to try it. Let's see. Um, I grab it this way. That was how... So this one is... Oh. <laughs> this is in. Okay. I'm holding on too tight. Like that. Okay. And okay. now we're going to take it back out. So unscrew it. I'll hold the pliers. You unscrew it. Unscrew it the other way. These Why? go backwards. Okay? Keep going. Because Why? we got to put glue on it now so it stays in there. Okay? Super so glue. No wonder they call it super glue because it's super And then we glue. squirt super a little sticky. bit on the screw. Hold on. Wait. Don't touch it. So now this one right here. That one, I'm just going to hone that hole out right there a little bit. Okay. Mew, mew, mew. There. Let me try it. Okay, same same deal, right? Let me You're try it. Put it in there and then twist it. Okay, take the. Let me try it and practice. Here, try it like this. Oh, that's a smart idea. Okay, try that. Um. Twist, twist, twist. That's going to be harder because you're going through lead. So if you need a hand, let me know. Okay, goodbye. What does that mean? I thought you were going. Now I need to unscrew it. Did you screw it all the way in? No, let me try it. No. Okay, I screwed all the way in. Oh, oh rats. We kind of messed it up a little bit. That's okay. fine. No, no one will so notice. Much. Well, the hook won't hang. That, that's who will notice. Okay, that was my fault. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, let's uh. Meow. Look out! We have to make another one. It's okay. You have hit a wall. What are you saying? You were hit a wall. You're hitting a wall. What are you talking about? Nothing. Okay, now that hook hangers in. All right, now let's get your top one in. Meow. No. No. Am I losing you? No. I'm right here. Can you hear me now? Is this thing on? Yes. Okay. Sort of twist it. Sort of twist it. Okay, good. It fits. Woo. Okay. Let me hold it with it. Squirt some glue in there. Squirt some glue on there. And then okay. I'll just... Okay, let me try the old thing. Hold on, that's not going to work on that one because the lure's in the way. I just don't want you to get the glue on yourself. Okay. Super glue is no fun. All done, monsieur? There we go. Okay. 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 Okay
All done, monsieur. All done, Mrs. I, Madame. I speak a little French. Monsieur is a French mm, word. That, that is a little French. Okay, so your hook hangers are all hung. Yay. Good work, okay. And that was the youngest regular assistant, everybody. I think we're gonna have to redrill that hole and hit that wire right there. Rookie mistake. Okay, that's been officially honed out now. There's our hook hangers. Okay, I'm glad I thought of this before I forgot it. Now to the polyurethane. And there's the polyurethane on. We'll dip that one again just for good measure, make sure it's super sealed. And because it has a hole in the top where the Last hanger was. Ugh. Terrible camera work, regular guy. Polyurethanethon. It's time for the polyurethanethon here on Regular Guy Lures. It is not easy to film this and polyurethane it all at once, but it's at least a disaster. Good. Got it. Good, great, grand. Shine some light on the situation. And last but not least, whatever this lure's supposed to be someday. All right, just let them dry. All right, regular viewers, so we're back. We got our paint studio set up here. Finally. And um, we are gonna, uh, so I decided, I thought, you know, try to figure out what kind of pattern I was gonna put on this. Of course, I always wanted to do a shad pattern. Um, but uh, I was thinking about it last night, and because it got that pencil popper shape I always wanted, made me really think of uh, fishing with my dad for striped bass. Uh, my favorite pencil popper color, the one we used to use was just blue chrome, it's called. And that was uh, that was by Cotton Cordell, uh, pencil popper. Um, great success with that lure. But uh, my favorite color um, was by, I think it was Gibbs, made a pencil popper. And um, they had one in mackerel. Uh, their pencil popper was a lot more expensive. Um, every now and then I find one on sale. I could get one, nice big wooden pencil popper. Anyway, uh, they had a mackerel color, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, this is not going to match any of the fish where I live and uh, any of those situations um, that I'm going to be fishing in. But I don't think the bass or whatever that's fish I'll put this in front of will notice. But uh, I just really want to recreate that color because I really enjoyed it as a kid. So let's get busy on that. Pretty simple color. All right, I do not like how these stripes are coming out. We're gonna start over. I'm just gonna respray the whole thing gray uh, and we'll start right over. I got an idea. All right, regular viewer. So I fired up my weller and I got my foam board out and I drew my lines, my macro lines on it. And I'm gonna try to do this one handed. I don't know, you gotta apply a little bit of pressure. But uh, anyway, if you can, <laughs> if I had two hands right now, this uh, weller, uh, my soldering iron rather, will uh, melt right through this foam board here. And you can see the shapes I've already done. All right, uh, it's hard to do with one hand on camera and I don't have a place to clamp my camera over here or a place to put my soldering iron where I have a camera. But anyway, uh, that's working out swimmingly and I'm gonna keep going on that. I'm just kinda follow these lines I drew with a marker here. This is a very well ventilated area. I got the smoke being sucked out right there. Um, but uh, I think that's going to make us a nice stencil. So I'll let you know what that is like when we're done. Okay, through the magic of more spray paint, we were able to pretend that that first part didn't happen. Um, so again, starting off with green. All right, so got our stencil in place. Um, I glued it on, yeah, glued it. I taped it on with uh, painter's tape just to try to make it idiot proof for me. And uh, let's see if we can do our best.
Okay, let's put a little dab of glue. How do you do? That lure with Dunzo's. That is great looking. And that rattle. That is some fierce rattle right there. That's pretty good with that lead, hitting that lead uh, plate in the back. Can't wait to get this thing out on the water, which we're going to try to do tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to put a clear coat on this with our uh, UV resin and uh, seal this bait up for good. All right, get a good thick clear coat on there, and I'm going to go put it on the uh, rotisserie to let it smooth out before I hit it in the good UV. Good job! Look at that. He is almost bigger than the lure. That is a beautiful looking bass. <laughs> right in these nice early morning hours on the pencil popper. Thank you, sir. All right, look at that. Almost the same size as the lure. Yes, thank you. Here's our pencil popper. Uh, we already caught a fish on it. I'm very impressed with the action. Here's how it sits in the water perfectly, like a walk the dog lure should. And I'll fire it out there and show you its action. Great walk the dog action. Can you zoom in? Can you try that? A lot of splash. You can hear that knock, which is perfect. It's a great lure. And it fires out there a mile if I want it to. That's a long cast right there, isn't it? Yes. Usually when I'm fishing a walk the dog lure like this for bass, letting it sit is a big part of the part of the, uh, the experience. Um, the regular grandfather used to tell me when I was a kid, you want to let your top water sit until all the rings disappear. I think uh, there's some merit to that. Uh, he also might have been trying to just get me to slow down in general, but I'll usually only walk it for you know about. 10 or 12 feet or so, and then just let it sit again. If I'm around a piece of structure, you know, if I'm fishing it around a dock or a tree or a pile of rocks, not that there's any of that here, um, sometimes I'll even do less, just a couple pops, let it sit even longer. But this one just walks so well, you can uh, get it going right away, just pop, 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 just let it sit there. And it's made a lot of ruckus, but it really hasn't gone anywhere. Which is the advantage of the walk the dog technique, is there's a lot of commotion, a lot going on, uh, a lot of splashing, but you're really not covering a lot of water. It's not moving forward fast, if that makes sense. Beautiful. We're back, regular viewers. You've reached the end of another exciting adventure here in the regular shop. Uh, this concludes our video of the pencil popper. Super happy with this with this lure. Very easy to make. The concept worked. And I'm going to do it again because uh, it works so well. So that's one eighth ounce split shot and one little uh, plug of lead, and you've got just a great rattle. Um, the paint job using that little stencil that I made with the uh, foam board and uh, my uh, soldering iron, yeah, whatever that's called, uh, that worked out really well um, because I can't do detail with my airbrush like you're supposed to be able to do. Um, I liked how the paint job faded into that silver. This is just rattle can silver here. I could have sanded this down and smoothed it out. 
Uh, another drawback was I messed up on the clear coat. I was trying to put a pretty thick clear coat on, but uh, this is one of going to be one of those the the more you know. You know situations. Is make sure your lure fits inside your UV chamber before you clear coat it, dear regular viewers, or else you'll have a lumpy mess on your hands uh, from clear coat dripping all over the place while you're trying to figure out how to get it in there after you spend all the time smoothing it out on a rotator. So anyway, but uh, the one bass that I caught didn't seem to notice. Maybe the rest of them did. Maybe that's only, only caught one bass. Huh. Who knew? But anyway, all that to say, fun lure to make, better lure to use. I'm going to go put it back on my rod because I'm going to use it the next time I go out as well and um, see if I can't make a couple more of these and, uh, you know, just enjoy them. I think that's going to be one of my new favorite top waters to make. Super easy to make again. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments down there. Uh, again, if you'd like to uh, send us a picture of the lures that you're building or the fish that you're catching, we would love to see them. Please send those to our email address right here. And, uh, and we'll get back to you in a reasonable, regular time. Thank you so much for watching and you stay regular. Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs> you stay regular.